First on BBC Two, could there be more to Gerald than meets the goggle eyes? It's really good. There's a really gruesome bit at the end when all these insides pull on a No. Come and sit here. Sorry, I want to sit with Kitty. You took the wrong homework. Oh, yeah. Went better than yours. Cheek. has been clamped. <laughs> so she's going to be a bit late in this morning. Now, in the meantime, could you... Well, could you take us today, Miss? I'll stay with you till she gets here. I don't think she's going to be too long. But in the meantime, could you get on with the paintings that you started last week? And I'll need a couple of volunteers to cut up clay for pottery. Volunteer one, Helly, and... Um, can Kitty do it with me? What about me? Sorry. I think we'll let Kitty have a go this time. Come on then, tell me what happened next. What do you mean? Kitty, you know. What happened with goggle eyes? Oh, goggle eyes. Kitty, you just got to the bit where you started to like him. Not much, just a teeny bit, but that was only because you were standing up to Mum and being on my side for once. Then you hated him again because he blew it. Absolutely. How? Isn't this stupid? <laughs> Kitty! Well, I just finished my boring weekly chore, digging up Mum's potatoes, to augment my measly pocket money, when... That's 40 pence, please. Great, thanks. Hang on. I don't believe this. What? Kitty's just dug up these potatoes, right? Yeah. From the vegetable plot begun by her father and now kept up by her with a bit of help from Judith. Help? She never helps. You buy all the seeds? Yeah. All the garden tools? Well, yeah. Manure, netting, bean poles, you know, the lot. Kitty's charging you for the potatoes. And what's wrong with that? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Why? I don't like gardening, neither does Mum. It's a big chore. Dad liked it. Now he's gone, Mum pays me to keep me going. <laughs> and have you paid her for all the food she cooks? And all the rags she vacuums? Huh? All the baths she cleans? All the trolley she wheels around Sainsbury's in her lunch hour when she's exhausted and needs to put her feet up? Oh, come on, Gerald. I am a mother. You're her family, and she's yours. You should have to bribe her to pull her weight. It's disgusting. Yeah, maybe you're right. I mean, I've never really felt easy about it. I mean, I used to help my parents, but they'd never have dreamt of giving me any money for it. Oh, I should think not. But I do think Kitty should have something, especially now Jude's old enough to pull her weight but never does. Well, if anything, you should be finding Judas, not handing out great bribes to Kitty. Great bribes? Ten measly pence a pound? Oh, oh, look out! I think she's angling for a wage rise, our little entrepreneur. <laughs> oh, dear, Kit. It's like if Gerald gets his way, you've had your chips.
I didn't know you felt like that. I didn't really. <laughs> Look, uh, we'll, we'll make a deal, all right? No, <laughs> and, and, and I won't. I won't invite him at all next week. It'll just be the three of us. Just be <laughs> all right. All right, darling. Come on, well, don't cry. Why don't we have to hang on the whole weekend? Why can't we have you to ourselves now? Well, tomorrow's Sunday. It's the demo. Well, that's all right then. Just the three of us. Well, Gerald's coming. <laughs> well, he can't, no! Darling. <sighs> he, he wants to. <sighs> Tell him you've changed your mind then. No. Why? Why not? I don't mind telling him the truth, that you'd rather he didn't come, but I can't say that I've changed my mind. Do you see that? All right, Mum, promise me. If he has to come, promise me you won't tell him. Promise. No, no, I won't promise. Okay. I love you, Mum. I love you too, darling. <laughs> Five seven four point six. Major stocks. I may have made my promise, but I still hoped he wouldn't turn up. My oh, goodness, Gerald's not here. Come on, Kitty. Ooh! <laughs> it's nice, but the colours are running. Kitty, it's lovely, Joseph. What? <laughs> Great! <laughs> Hi! Hello! Hello, Hi. Georgine! Hi. Hello! Is everybody? Suit. Nice, oh. isn't it? Austin Reed. I think you scrap pot to give your organization a bad name. So there. Hello, Beth. <laughs> oh, it's good to see a new recruit. <laughs> so where is everybody? Well, this is everybody. Well, this is it. Well, Gerald, it's really hard to ask people to give up their Sundays and come to some muddy building site in the middle of nowhere. They'd rather be in bed with the papers. Mm. Playing golf. No, don't. Aren't you missing your goal? It's not too late, you know. No, 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 absolutely not. No, I'm sticking with you. I'm being, you know... Supportive? Supportive, that's it. It'll be really boring. You're telling me. <laughs> I want to ask hello. Do you have to the puppy be one on the bus? What do you think of Gerald, then? Not a lot.
dumper truck. Bring me my concrete answer, man. Why did you come if you're going to make fun of us? I came for the pleasure of your company. Blackjacks. Anyway, Black I'm fully biodegradable. All natural fibres, you know. What's left of them? <sighs> can I have the business section? As long as I can have it back before you recycle it. What have we here? Whole wheat flapjacks made for myself. <laughs> it's, a, it's a special recipe with molasses and walnuts. Really? <laughs> Beth's famous for flapjacks. <laughs> Why didn't the kids come? Oh, I refuse. Don't blame them after last time. Why well, would happen? They eat the flapjacks? <laughs> Mama needs to do. No. I'll just squeeze my sandwich, shall I? I'm <laughs> cute. <laughs> There's Marcus. Who's uh, just sitting at the back there? He did work for Oxfam for a while. Oh. Uh, yes, and he's an agrarian economist. Is that painful? You were. Uh, you wouldn't care to make a contribution, would you, Gerald? use them as building foundations when they run out of concrete. Gerald, it's not funny. Look, look have a look at this site. They're going to drain 20 acres of marshland, and they're going to build a boating lake on And there's going to be more sites. There's going to be a dry ski slope, multiplex cinema, cinema, three fast food restaurants, car parks, you know. I mean, the whole place is just going to be enormous. All those jobs, though. I know where we're going. It's a depressed rural area. Always has been. This whole development could revive it. What, putting up a hideous leisure centre? Don't you understand? <laughs> it won't just bring jobs. It'll bring pleasure to thousands of kids whose parents can't afford anything else. Gerald, Gerald, that is just not the point. It's a bit of a middle-class luxury, isn't it, complaining about something like this? I mean, not everyone can afford to take their kids to Italy for their holidays, you know? We've only been once. But don't you see? You've got your own theme park at home. You've got gardens and swings and bikes and rabbits. And you. There is a green hill far away in the city wall. And is it was green till today? Now the building is strong. Everything. Whales, rainforests. Pandas against dolphins. What? Oh, it's Inspector McGee! Come on, everybody, let's get it over with. It's McGee! Oh, oh, what a big girl. You've been eating your vegetables. Yeah. Morning, all! <laughs> well, it's a bit of a ass monkey, eh, today for this. Haven't got homes to go to. <laughs> Hello, morning. Hello, how's Kitty? Good. <laughs> ah, a new one. Morning. Right. Who's going to be arrested today, then? <laughs> <laughs> well, on some campaigns, some of us get arrested for obstruction. 
And that way the courts and the police and the papers, they get to see that we're not all loonies and layabouts. They get to see that sensible members of the society sensible. object to all the things that are happening to this development. And then when we go to court, they find out why. Yeah, then what? Well, we pay the fine or refuse to pay the fine in principle. And go to jail? That's mad. Mad? Don't listen to him, Mum. He probably knows the people who are building this place. They probably all belong to some rotary club or something. Ah, oh. oh, hero of the hour. Here we go. Now look, lady, we've got work to do. So do we. I want to speak to someone, phone the office Monday. It'll be too late. Now, this is totally out of order. Anyone told you you're trespassing? Anyone ever told you you're a vandal? Now listen, you! I've got work to do. I don't give a monkey's what you think. Men. Get up, love. Why don't you come and join us, Gerald? <laughs> right, ladies. You know the form. I will be having my Yorkshire pudding now. Right. Name, love, and full address. Beth Elliot. Beth? Elizabeth Elliot. Oh, take a look at that. Shut up. Uh, that's how I like to see a woman. On her back. <laughs> The sounds grew fainter and fainter. The walkie-talkies, smaller, continued. And it was just me, lying there. However often we did this, it's the strangest sensation. Suddenly, the world seems larger and more serious, and more precious. Stretching out for miles and miles in peaceful blue. Or hanging over you in dark, bruisy colours, threatening to spill. I think everyone in the world should stretch out just for a few minutes and look at the sky and be astonished. It is a funny feeling. For a moment, everything was so peaceful. The quiet filled the storm. What happened? Kitty? What happened? And then? All hell broke loose. Oh, God. I Look at those awful people. Those intruders. <laughs> Hey, hi. <laughs> I'm pretty close to Mars and that's all we need. How about you? You got a blue van? Yeah. Someone's just driven off in it. What? <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Kelly, where have you been? You said I could copy your science homework. Oh, sorry. I'll just get it now. It's too late. Please come in quietly. Quietly take that off, thank you. Come on, girls. Quietly, quietly. Put your bags down. Put your bags down quietly and thank you. Now, today, we're going to look at the food chain. <laughs> The grass, the 
grass makes food from the energy in the sunlight. The cow is a herbivore and eats the grass to make beef. The beef is then turned into hamburgers, which you stuff into your faces. You are predators. A miss, why if a cannibal eats its own foot? What if a rabbit eats some lettuce and then eats its own droppings? Is that a predator? No, no. The food in the droppings hasn't yet become part of the rabbit, so it's still on the way from the lettuce. What if you pick your nose and eat it? No. <laughs> we don't it's want chaos. to discuss that, Chase. It's quite funny, though, isn't it? And you're built out of sunlight. We could carry on with the story. You can have. She'd never notice. Food chains. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, what happened next? Well, we were really starving by then. But good old Beth in her bag, full of goodies. I'm hungry. Oh, dear. Well, we can't have that, can we? She looks frozen. Do you think I'd better take her back to the coach? She's all right. She's only little. For God's sake, Gerald. When I was her age, I had to sit every Sunday for two hours in a stone-cold church, bored stiff, just to try and save our selfish little souls. Jude's all right. A couple of times a year, she gets a few hours fresher and the chance to try and save the planet. What's so terrible about that? Tell you something. You're unbelievably bossy. You don't give a damn about anybody else's opinion. You're completely lacking in imagination when it comes to other people. And you never listen. Right. That's it. Come on, you lot. Up you get. Come on, up you get. Can't have you lot wasting my time. Your time? What about my time? This is your job. You're paid to do this. I'm a lot Rosalind. busier than you, and my job's just as important as yours. So don't go on to me about wasting your time. I'm more bothered about wasting my own. And so say all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. It's not Pete Ward, point, I want you out now! Yeah, come on, just get the hell out of our way. You wouldn't care if old bloody country was covered in concrete. Oh, just get back to the kitchen where you belong. We shall we not, we shall 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 not, we see your mother being driven off by the police. Especially when your dad lives a hundred miles away. I've got to hear what happens. We might have a French group. Come and join the thickies, then. I can't. I'll tell you tomorrow, then. No. All right, meet me after school. OK. for hours. At first, we were really frightened. Gerald took care of us. Which would Madame prefer, spruce and alpine herbs 
or biodegradable scrub? Mm, the scrub, please. Don't forget your ears. Mm. What exactly did you mean today about scruff pots? I think you should dress better. I mean, look at your mother. She goes off to the hospital every morning looking smart and respectable. But does she wear her Green Party badge then or a Friends of the Earth badge? No, excuse me. So no one ever says, oh, look, she seems like a, a smart, responsible sort of woman and an environmental campaigner to boot. So they're not all cranks and lentil freaks. He's a lovely car, aren't they? What's he called? Pauline. Sorry, Pauline. Actually, you might not believe this, but I agree with an awful lot of what you're trying to do. It's just your methods I'd like to change. There you are. What about you? Now I'm going to go and get us some supper. What about the pieces? I think you need a proper meal inside you. Now, when you've had your bath, will you warm some plates? And put the fire on in the dining room, will you? Dining room? Yeah, the dining room, you know, the one between the kitchen and the hall. Big table, lots of chairs. Judith, slippers. <laughs> Come on, put your slippers on, you'll catch your death. There's a good girl. Then you can help Kitty lay the table. Oh, no! Now then. Chicken biryani for you. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, pretty. And veg korma. Mm. Veg korma. Veg korma. Veg korma. Vegetable korma. Vegetable korma. Mmm, my favourite. I know. I asked in the shop. Thanks. You look tired out. You better go straight to bed when you've helped with the dishes. She never helps with the dishes. Why not? She's got arms, hasn't she? I know. I've always thought it was a bit unfair. I suppose it's because she was so much younger. Ridiculous. Means that the youngest in every family grows up without the ability to squeeze a bottle of... Judith! I'm tired! Yes, we're all tired. You slept for two whole hours on the bus. Two and a half. Come on. Do you want a stool to stand on? Can't it wait till the morning? Only sluts and drunks leave the dishes till morning. Exactly. I don't know. Everyone, your mother included, treats Judith as if she was a baby. In fact, she's perfectly capable. Aren't you? Of course I am. I don't need a stool. I can reach. Did you ever get bored with that stuff? What stuff? That. Don't you think it's a bit boring? Dear me, no. Not boring, no. Isn't it a boring way of looking at the lovely green planet? I mean, we've got plants and animals and things. Don't you think it's a bit boring to go on about the stock market and me tidying up my bedroom? Maybe it's because I'm boring myself. I think I might be. Sometimes I look at people like you and your mother and I think, no, I was never like that. Not even when I was young. Maybe I was born boring. Boring in my cradle. Somebody's got to be boring just to appreciate you lot. Maybe that's why your mother likes me. I'm reliable. Predictable. Maybe she needs that. I know your sister does. Perhaps more than you realise. High-rate taxpayers have to get the best from their savings, and the following investments are recommended. Ogden Securities, Bartlett Ops, Skippy Foods, Hickey Incorporated, <laughs> and Dodds Rouge. 
Should I wait up for Mum? Well, school tomorrow. You better go to bed, eh? That's because he saw. It didn't really have secret ingredients. Didn't it? I just made that up. It was nice and everything, but he just got it from a jar. That's yeah, pretty good from a jar. I like the uh, Bongole stuff. Night. Night. See you at breakfast. I remember every minute of that night. I remember thinking, will Mum be all right? I thought about Gerald and how mean I'd been to him. because he goggled at Mum's legs. Simon thought she had nice legs. So did Dad, I'm sure. Though I couldn't remember him ever saying so. Perhaps that had been part of the trouble. I thought about a lot of things that night. About how unfair I'd been to Gerald. It wasn't his fault that Mum and Dad had split up. It wasn't his fault that he was a different sort of person from us. He was trying so hard to like me. Why couldn't I try to like him? And what would we have done without him that night? Stayed with the people next door? gone home with Beth and slept the night on her floor? No, I realised for the first time how glad I was to have him in the house. Perhaps that's why, when Mum came home, I didn't go down. I just felt so safe and warm and cosy. I wish I had. If I'd gone downstairs, that ghastly, ghastly quarrel might never have happened. Where's everybody? Shh, they're asleep. Oh. <laughs> well, is this the welcome home for a conquering heroine? There's nothing heroic about waking two exhausted children. Well, you might have let them stay up. Keep them up, you mean? Just to cheer you in. A bit self-indulgent, isn't it? They've got school in the morning. been a lot more welcoming than you. Well, naturally. Been a lot better indoctrinated. Indoctrinated? Rosalind, you've behaved incredibly irresponsibly. Oh. Oh, have I now? I think I want to spend hours in a freezing cold police station. I'm not drunk and disorderly. I'm not an executive who's boozed up at some company doing run an old lady down in his car. That's more your scene. What do you mean? Now listen, Gerald. It's very good of you to bring the girls home and stay with them, and I'm really very grateful, but I'm not prepared to stand here and listen to abuse, and I don't take kindly to being called irresponsible, so just shut up! He won't yell at her. I promise. He's reliable. How dare you take out to bring up my children? You can depend on Gerald. God, no wonder your wife left you. You're so bloody bossy and priggish. You're the irresponsible one. Go on, go on, ignore the drug companies torturing animals, the chemical factories polluting our rivers. Go on, go home and stick your head in a paper bag. Keep goggling away at your share prices and your interest rates. People like you who ignore what's happening to our planet. She didn't walk out, by the way. 
It was a mutual agreement. God, you see, you're not listening. You never listen. There were no recriminations. We just realised that things weren't working out, that's all. Well, how nice, how nice for you both. Christ, it sounds so boring, you and Annette, the little housewife. What do you mean, housewife? She was bringing up Jam her... Jam-making and her W.I. She was never in the W.I. The chair covers and those wonderful Sunday picnics she used to cook. Let's leave her out of this, shall we? She was so bloody marvellous, why didn't you stay with her? For God's sake, what's the matter with you? That's all over, a long, long time ago. Shut up. Shut up! God, why don't you just... stop just standing there? If you could see yourself, Kitty's right, you're so smug. You make me sick. You could depend on Gerald. He just got into his car and drove away. He went? He just went. What then? I'll tell you tomorrow. Easter Monday on two, and the making of Edgar Wright's new epic. The second Heimat is the subject of Arena. In Heimat, Edgar restored the broken memories of his childhood. In this film, it's the fragments of his youth, which he rescues and reshapes. And then... Having reached the end of my poor sinner's life, my hair now white, I prepare to leave on this parchment my testimony as to the wondrous and terrible events that I witnessed in my youth. Dark secrets and illicit desires in the name of the rose. And then... I thought I'd write to Juliet For she would understand It's a little bit different. It's not a rock opera. It's not, a, it's not the Brodsky Quartet's rock and roll record, you know. It's a, it's a new thing. You can expect the unexpected naturally. Easter Monday on two. Dudley Moore's a pint-sized playboy with a penchant.